ऑफ ऑफ सैटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस यूनिट वन ऑर्बिटल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ सैटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशंस इन दिस यूनिट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फर्स्ट ऑर्बिटल मैकेनिक्स एंड इन दिस पॉइंट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फिजिकल लॉज फोर्सेस एक्टिंग ऑन सैटेलाइट सो लेट अस डिस्कस इट वन बाय वन सो before moving towards actual orbital mechanics we need to understand kepler's three laws and newton's three laws which we have already studied in your previous education so this is newton's first law the newton's first law says every body continues in a state of uniform motion unless it is compelled to change that state by force imposed upon it here we can see two figures in figure 1 there is no force applied on the ball so the ball is in its static state while in second figure we can see there is force applied on the ball so because of force the ball will change its place Newton's second law it is law of momentum change in momentum is proportional to and in the direction of the applied force so the momentum is in the direction of the force this law states that the momentum is in the direction of force here we can see two figures and these two figures shows that how the direction is proportional to the applied force the momentum is equal to mass into velocity and change in momentum is given by force is equal to mass into acceleration newton's third law it is of, of equal action and reaction for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so these are some equations which are related to newton's laws first equation is s is equal to ut plus half at square where s is distance traveled in time t u is the initial velocity at time t is equal to 0 a is the acceleration at time t then second equation is v square is equal to u square plus 280 phi is the final velocity at time t phi is equal to u plus 80 and f is equal to mass into acceleration as stated by newton's second law so here we are going to discuss forces acting on satellite as we know according to newton force is equal to mass into acceleration and the unit of force is newton a newton is the force required to accelerate 1 kg by 1 meter per second square underlying unit of a newton are therefore kg meter per second square in this diagram we can see the earth is at the center of the orbit this orbit has radius rs and the earth is at the center then satellite is moving in this orbit so we can see there are two types of forces acting on the satellite centripetal force and centrifugal force one force is inward while another force is in outward direction inward force is called as centripetal force while the outward force is called as centrifugal force here you can see the equations for f out that is centrifugal force it is given by mv square by r and inward force f in is equal to g me m divided by r square so 
let us discuss acceleration formula. The acceleration due to gravity is equal to A which is equal to mu divided by R square where R is the radius from the center of earth, mu is the universal gravitational constant, g multiplied by the mass of the earth, m e and mu is the Kepler's constant and it is given by 3.9861352 into 10 raise to 5 kilometer cube per second square and g is equal to 6.672 into 10 raise to minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Again we can write g in terms of older units also. Then here the equation for inward force that is centripetal force is given as we know force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, we can place the value of acceleration here A is equal to mu divided by R square. Here acceleration is because of gravity at a distance R from the center of the earth. So, we have used formula A is equal to mu divided by R square and the unit for this is kilometer per second square where the constant mu is the product of universal gravitational constant g and the mass of earth m e. Then if the force inverts due to gravity it is given by f in then f in is equal to m multiplied by mu divided by r square that is acceleration mu divided by r square. So, again we know that mu is nothing but g multiplied by m e. So, we can rewrite this equation in terms of g and m e. So, f in is equal to mass of the satellite multiplied by g m e divided by r square. Similarly, there is a centrifugal acceleration and it is given by a is equal to v square divided by r. Thus, the centrifugal force we can write in terms of f out and it is given by f out is equal to mass into acceleration that is v square divided by r. So, f out is equal to m multiplied by v square divided by r. So, if the forces on the satellite are balanced then f in is equal to f out. So, we can place the values of f in and f out and we can rewrite the equation m multiplied by mu divided by r square is equal to m multiplied by v square divided by r. So, again reducing this equation we will get the equation for velocity v of the satellite in circular orbit is v is equal to under root under square root mu divided by r. If the orbit is circular, the distance travelled by satellite in one orbit around the planet is 2 pi r. So, we know that r is radius of orbit from the satellite to the centre of the planet. So, with the help of this, we can calculate orbital period for satellite. So, t is equal to 2 pi r that is perimeter of the orbit or we can call it as a perimeter uh, which is traced by the satellite divided by v. So, 2 pi r divided by v we have formula for velocity v. So, if we put the value of v in the equation we will get 2 pi r divided by mu divided by r raised to half and after rearranging this equation, we will get t is equal to 2 pi r raised to 3 by 2 divided by mu by r raised to half. So, these are some examples of orbital velocities and periods. Here, 
the satellite intelsat which is at height 35786.43 km it revolves with orbital velocity 3.0747 km per second and the period is 23 hours 56 minutes and 4.091 seconds similarly we have eco global sky bridge iridium satellites so with the help of this equation we can easily calculate orbital period of the satellite and the velocity of satellite in circular orbit thank you